You straight up cuckooed that dude, bro. Oh my God. You've got all your Charger gear on because you're feeling fresh as hell. Well, you guys better enjoy it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert. On the move, and throws, and touchdown! Players, coaches, staff, fans, together, we can create something truly special. Stay tuned for some good content. <laughs> All right, folks. No more waiting. The time is now. The place is here. Welcome back to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Will Dogson, with my buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Finally, guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I get to see you guys in, like, I get to see Kyle in five days. Oh, I can't believe it. Football so is upon us, excited. folks. But let's not forget Kyle the Coach Duggan. Okay. To start with, I have to shout out this God, shirt. God, what received. a shirt. Look at this. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Brisket. Brisket we, record, Monday. we record on a Monday. It just felt way too fitting. <laughs> have Justin Herbert on during this yeah. episode. You got to shout out Pablo. Pablo Valencia. Pablo hooked it yes. up. Dude, so sick. took it. And Included I think a little note that was pretty funny. So you guys look <laughs> out for your package. I can't wait good. to get mine. It's it's Hey, it's good for you. You're in California. You get your shit faster than us because I would have yep. absolutely worn that on this episode. I pay a lot of money in property taxes, <laughs> income taxes, and real estate. <laughs> to get so I get a little bit of an extra. You got to have yeah, a few I get perks. A, I get it a day early. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, folks. I, I can't believe it's finally happening. Football is coming in hot and heavy. There's so much to talk about this episode. Uh, we've got a fan focus lined up and an Ask Bolt fam. Uh, but let's start off at the top. Uh, Chargers released finally. This felt late, but they yeah. finally released yeah. their uniform schedule uh, for the year for the powder blues, the whites, the navies, and the royal blues. Did I miss something? Are we Were we supposed to get like an alternate helmet? Is that just not we wanted? Happening? We were hoping for fans one. want the alternate helmet. Yeah, I thought that it's was like a el- thing that was happening this year in the NFL, though. Some it teams, is. So yes. some teams Got you it. have you now have the option. To the do option an alternate is the charges are like no, our jerseys just are chose so not perfect. To. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Got yeah, it. most of the teams that were doing the alternate helmet at least had like an announcement like, hey, we're doing an alternate helmet. Take a yeah. look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think if the Chargers were going to do it, they would have done the same thing, but not this year. Uh, so looking at the schedule, you know, the powders, powder blues are typically for the home games, white jerseys, typically for the away games. In fact, that's exactly what it is. As I but there's a, no, there are a couple in there. There's a couple of, there's a couple the of away games powder for powder blues, blues yeah. but the, but yeah. the white jerseys are strictly away games. Powders are dominant. Yeah. We got yeah. nine games with the powders and that's, yeah. and that's at perfect. the Titans and at the jets, which is prime time in powder blue. Ooh, love it. So and good. We're going to look so good in our powder blues week one. Uh, cannot wait. Yes. <gasps> and uh, then the alternate jerseys, the Royal blues are going to be week 14 against the Broncos and the Navy. The opportunity to break the curse with the Navy <laughs> jerseys <laughs> is week 12 against the Ravens. Of all if we teams. don't win that game, those just have to be forever retired. I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you, I bought one. Me buying one broke the broke the curse. So I hope so. Be ready. Forgot Lock it one. in, folks. Right. Yes, that's Lock I'll be. That's what I'll be wearing week one. I'll be wearing my Navy. So, which I, lo- I like the Royal. That's my favorite jersey. Is that Royal? I like the Royal too. But the Navy. It's so funny. Like the Navy was almost my least favorite for a while. But then the more I looked yeah. at it, I was like. God, that's like that's the old navy blue yeah. for the for the Chargers. It's that's pretty close. That yeah. was so reminiscent of like some of the Philip Rivers jerseys. So if they would have just gone full blown throwback and used those exact jerseys, that would have been my favorite. The twist on it makes it, it. I don't know why it looks like a Pop Warner jersey to me. That's okay. It looks like uh, they do a lot of edits and they're making it look super like over the top. That's just how I feel when I look at it. That's okay. The Royal Blues, in my opinion, I mean, well, the Royal Blues Broncos, get the Royal Blue pants yeah. too, like oh, the whole that, shebang. It's I can't, so you good. can't talk me off the powder blues. You can't, and it's like the yeah, most yeah. sold jersey. So, like, I'll like a, I want to see a powder blues. A see, I want so many goddamn powder blues at this <laughs> game. I just want to be overwhelmed with the powder blues. Well, that's, I mean, the powder blues overtake half the season that's nine games in the powder blues yeah, only thank god six in the white and one in the navy nfl the knows what's up yeah, yeah we do. all know what's up so uh be on the lookout for those jerseys um the upcoming opponent dolphins have been uh coming up with some injuries 
from what I've been seeing. I saw Jalen Ramsey Aww. dealing with an oh, no, well, we old baby, but uh, the oh, Dolphins. Oh. What, how do you? How does the Dolphins sound like? Oh, 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 that's, oh. That's no, a that's the seal. A seal. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Thank you. All of those Thank are you. so bad, <laughs> <laughs> and those are all. We'll all now live on YouTube for the rest of our lives. Yes, those you're are welcome. So bad. <laughs> Uh, the Dolphins' thin backfield gets thinner as Jeff Wilson Jr. is now placed on injured reserve. Uh, so Jeff Wilson Jr. running back and K- uh, Jalen Ramsey cornerback on injured reserve, meaning they're out a minimum of four games. So Dolphins running backs Raheem Mostert and Devon Akane, Ashane will now play a prominent early season role. The, 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 I remember all these Dolphin fans coming at us like, we got Jalen Ramsey now. You guys are done. Herbert yeah. won't be able to do anything. Like, oh, it doesn't matter like he's playing. Yikes. Ah. It doesn't matter if you're not playing. Nah, petty. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see. Dolphins Sports Illustrated ranked their schedule by difficulty. This is what they think of us, apparently. Oh, no. Wait, so Dolphins have their own Sports Illustrated? Yeah, their own. Like, Sports Illustrated has their own section for each team. Ew, so we have our own too, but this was that the writer thought of us when he ranked okay. their whole schedule. We are the are eighth, we, we're the eighth most eighth? difficult team to play. So it says, based on talent alone, this probably should be ranked higher because the Chargers have a lot of high profile <gasps> talent on their roster, but they also have a nasty history of <gasps> underachieving and losing games they should win. <gasps> Another key factor here and why this game isn't ranked higher is that we expect the Dolphins to have a very strong <gasps> fan presence at SoFi Stadium that day. So why won't my people let dick. this go? Why, will <laughs> not this na- why can this narrative not die? Like, why won't know. you die? It's, Dude, it just won't. <laughs> lazy writing is what it is. It's, it's the dead horse. Lazy. They can't stop beating it. It's, it, it's and one. We kicked the crap out of you last year. Not like yeah. got lucky. Like we dominated you. You're lucky you were in the game. Right. That was one year ago. I know the rosters have changed a little bit, but pretty much the same rosters. Yeah. And it's like, what are you talking? Like last year you were at SoFi and you did not dominate the game <laughs> as far as fan attendance. Not what, even close. What are we talking about? And that here? was a, yeah. Wasn't that a primetime game? Wasn't that like yeah, a yeah, game or something like that? Sure so it was. Yeah. Come on now. Sports. I, just, I, I thought I'd have a go look. I thought we'd have a go look at what everyone else is saying. Like the biased bullshit that is the other, uh, the other That's writers insanity. for that team. Yeah, it's crazy. Now you if, know why all these Dolphin fans are delusional. No, it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's so funny that it, that's the only thing they can think of it, after the Chargers have now are now going into their third, actually fourth year uh, at the stadium. We missed the first one because of COVID. Right. Yeah. And now they're going into their fourth year at the new stadium and they're still like, oh, Chargers still can't bring out a lot of fans. Bah, bah, bah. Come on, dude. Like do some research. We're not bitch. in the soccer field anymore. We're in the we're I, in our home day. This is the first year where I'm actually because each year we go to the home opener, there's more and more and more of us. Yeah. This feels like a different year. I am excited to see how much we fill the stadium up. I am too. Just just think back, man, when we were at that soccer stadium and we were getting our asses kicked. I, I remember all of that. And a lot of the beginning of this podcast. We talked about the narrative of we don't have fans and we're not, yeah, t- you're not was, getting home. That life. was a big reason for us starting this podcast. Exactly. Yep. But yep. we, if, if you've listened to us in the last year and a half, two years, we don't talk about that anymore because mm-hmm. it's not a thing anymore. There's yeah. a shit Until ton of lazy us. writers <laughs> pop up out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that the writer wasn't named here. I wish I had a name. I'll, I'll find his name. Okay, oh, you thank want his you. name? Oh, okay. Re- research that while I go you on to the name? next part here. Uh, yeah. Here's. Some quotes from practice. This is my research face. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, Ryan Ficken, our special teams coordinator. Got it. Okay. <laughs> this just in. Alan Poupart. Oh, um, that's so fitting. <laughs> that sounds like a fake <laughs> that name, is sir. Alan, I'm going to spell it. A-L-A-I-N. P-O-U-P-A-R-T. Alan Poupart. Poupart. Okay. You got some shit takes, Poupart. <laughs> As I was saying, we had uh, quotes from practice. Ryan Ficken, special teams coordinator on Dick of the Kicker. Uh, oh, no, we're talking about poop and Dicker. <laughs> this, this is not real life. <laughs> That's a segue and a half. <laughs> uh, all right. Mr. Ficken said, Dustin, first and foremost, is an elite kicker. Either way, 
However it shook out, we were going to lose a top kicker. We felt as an organization that the body of work with what Cameron has done, nothing that Hopkins hasn't done, more of what Dicker has done. Cameron Dicker. Oh, <laughs> we don't even know him by his first name. Yeah, I only know him as Dicker. He's like Madonna, you right? Me a big, you <laughs> show me a picture of him and you said, Cam- "Name this guy." I would, not say, I would never say Cameron. <laughs> Who's Cameron? <laughs> oh shit! I, I, I am not kidding you. I forgot his first name was. That Cameron. should have been a bri- broad bolt trivia question. Give me Dicker the kicker's first name. What's Dicker's first name? I'd have taken home the box uh, of cereal just, for sure. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Doctor, God, you threw me off. Dr. Okay, Dicker. who's Cameron? Okay, nothing that Hopkins hasn't done. More of what Dicker has done. Our faith and belief in him and his consistency with it. Moving forward, we thought he was the right guy for the opportunity. It's his approach to the game. He plays like he's a veteran kicker. Nothing sways him at all. He's confident in everything he does. He's consistent in his approach. You know what you're going to get out of him. We're really excited that he's still a charger. Uh, Even last year, there were opportunities where other teams were pushing for him. We're fortunate that he's here. Uh, It was a great competition between those two guys. I thought they made each other better as they competed against each other. I think this is the first time we've heard from Ryan Ficken. They're like, save save the big guns for the beginning of the season. I like it. I I like to hear like the inside on that. That's really cool. Like, hey, Ficken and I are on the same page. Got to go with the dicker. But it does sound like it was already decided. Like everything that he just described, you knew coming out of last season. Sure. You knew that all off season. It doesn't sound like he was like, you know, Cameron was more consistent <laughs> this off season and hit, hit, like hit longer field goals in practice. It was just like a, yeah, this guy's just our guy. Yeah. Right. He was before we started and he still is. Yeah. yeah. Again. Yeah. He's like, it's nothing that Hopkins can't do. It's just more of what he has done, our faith and belief in him and the consistency with it. So right. uh, exciting to see uh, and to hear the, the whole process behind it. Um, Tui Pilatu on his NFL debut said, I just feel like it's another game. I know it's my first NFL game, Liar. but I just want to treat it like any other game. I know it's not going to be like that. There you go, Kyle. Just try, you go. Yeah. I guess, just got to try to trick my mind into that. I for sure feel prepared. Uh, we had good OTAs, good training camp. I feel like the team outside linebackers, uh, coach Giff Smith, uh, Chargers head coach, uh, Brandon Staley. Uh, been preparing me for whatever I got to do on Sunday. I'm just ready to go out there and do whatever they want me to do. I just, it's so cool. Like I'm really pulling for him because he's not going to be yeah. out there to start. He's going to come in. You're going to get yeah. like a, a a peppering of of him. And God, I just, I want to see what he's going to be able to do with his limited snaps. Because if mm-hmm. he's like a monster for seven, eight plays, like that's going to be so exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like coming into a situation where you just absolutely do not have to be the guy. No, you know, like, there's pressure, no expectation man. for you to be the guy. Um, he just gets to go in there and flash and make plays. And that's why I'll, probably a little bit of that is just another game. You can have that mindset a little bit because you're not going to be on the field to start the game. Yeah. You know, you're just going to get tapped in here and there when one of the studs needs a break. How many yeah. other teams in the NFL have their first and second round picks? They're like, yeah, we'll get on you in bench. a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. Come, we'll get you in a little bit. We'll we'll try out a little bit this <laughs> we'll game. Sprinkle just, you in. Everyone else is like, oh, fuck, the whole franchise is on my back. I better have a hundred yards of receiving. <laughs> yeah. uh, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> um, and then uh, Joey Bosa on week one. I think that our preparation has been really, really good. I think that the guys can use uh, this time off, especially the young guys that have been grinding in the preseason, to get a few days to stay off of our feet. I think that it's really important to get off of your feet for a few days when you won't really get that time at all coming up until maybe uh, the bye week or whatever. I think that we prepared really well. Every year I want to play great. I want to help my team. I think that more than ever, I just want to win some games. Doing my job is, I think, more important than ever. Obviously, I want to be dynamic and make plays and all that. But I think being a team player is the most important. Uh, that I can be while still going out there and being myself and making these plays. See, that's like the biggest part of this idea of playing connected defense and stopping, being able to stop the run is everyone buying into that mindset. Mm -hmm. They're like, I don't have to be the one that makes every tackle. I just have to do my job 
that then sets up the right guy to make the tackle for that scheme. Yeah. Because I mean, these guys all want to get paid, you know, like their, their livelihood is based on their productivity. You, you're not going to be able to go in free agency and be like, well, look at the tape. I did my job really good. Well, they're like, yeah, well you had two sacks a year and 45 tackles. Like I'm not paying you top dollar. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you can get guys to actually buy into that, especially guys like Joey Bosa who's already gotten paid more than enough money right. for his entire life. Right. It's like, if you can get those guys to buy in and that will eventually spread through the team, that's what adds to that idea of playing connected defense of I am an edge guy. I'm going to play on this edge and force everything back in. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to try to jump inside and make a play. I'm just going to do my job. Trust the linebackers. You're going to fill their gaps inside and make plays. And that's really what I think needs that. I mean, that's the main thing that needs to happen is, we need to become less selfish and more um, trusting of our teammates to make plays. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Um, well, I can't think of <laughs> trying to get a good. Do you know what else makes here. sense to you? <laughs> you know what else makes sense to me, folks? Thank you for the uh, softball Kyle. assist. Uh, going over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash charger chat. Uh, check out all the fun videos we've got over there, all the fun content. Uh, we just had our fantasy football draft with the people that signed up. and It was a doozy. It was something. How did you guys feel about your draft? What was your grade for yourself? Oh, my grade was don't, terrible. Don't worry about Yahoo. Don't look at <laughs> Yahoo. What was your grade? What did you grade your draft? Uh, I'm actually kind of excited. I, I Let me look at my team because I we also did a, a family draft with the Duggins, and I one I was sure dominant in the family calling. one. Gave me an A plus. I'm supposed to. I'm projected to win the whole. Yeah, the season. family one. That's I got not a good a. sign. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Well, it's uh, hard with 16 teams. It's like trying to get yeah. a good letter grade. Is if you get a decent letter grade, you're on fire. I'm kind of excited for my team. I'll, I'll be honest. There's a lot of guys on here. Like I, my tendency is to draft players that like, oh, I know this person, so I'm going to draft this person as opposed to like, oh, this is a guy that has an opportunity to, you know, make something happen. So, yeah, I, I'm excited, especially because I I mean, the only charger. Well, I got two. I got Quentin Johnston and Donald Parham. But because this is a for those that don't know, this is a 16 team league. So the top <laughs> players go fun. quickly and you're kind of grasping at straws near the end. But uh, I, I'm i really excited for Quentin Johnston, especially it, with the absence of Jalen Guyton, you know, having somebody as quick as him being able to run down the field and make some deep catches from Mr. Justin Herbert in the end zone. I'm just saying. Amen, amen. I'm looking forward to it. So, amen, amen. Uh, so definitely go check it out. Patreon.com slash Charger Chat. And if you don't want to go over there, that's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, ChargerChat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chatteteers in the member section and ask questions in Ask Bold Fam. So go check out ChargerChat.com. If you ever thought, why the heck is my wireless bill so dang high, then let me tell you about Mint Mobile, who we're partnering with for today's episode. You might already know Mint Mobile if you've seen those funny ads from Ryan Reynolds, who's also an owner, but let me quickly tell you about how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out all the retail stores and the salespeople and things like that. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? It's a good question. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code if you're interested in the best value in wireless. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Now, I've used Mint Mobile, and I gotta say, everything that they've talked about as far as switching over being extremely easy is 100% true. It was a super easy process, and then once I was switched over, I honestly didn't notice a difference in my performance. You know, all the apps that I typically used, like uh, Twitter and YouTube and things like that, ran exactly the same as they normally did on my previous carrier. Like I said, switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your own home. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, that's totally fine. Mint Mobile will ship you a new SIM card for free. It only takes about 15 minutes to switch, and Mint Mobile has great customer service if you need help. And right now, as a special limited time offer, you can get their unlimited plan, which is normally $30 a month, 
for just $15 a month. That's a 50% savings off their already super low price. It only takes 15 minutes to pay as low as $15 a month for your phone plan. It really is that simple. Use our link mintmobile.com slash charge a chat to get started or click the link down in the description or scan our QR code. It really helps out the channel. And if you've already made the switch to Mint Mobile, let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear about your experience with them. Thank you, Mint Mobile, for being our partner for this episode. Now back to the show. All right, folks, time to go on to the next segment. It is Fan Focus. And let's see what fan we are bringing into focus this week. Kevin! All right, guys, we are back with another Fan Focus, and we are super lucky to have a Kevin. Kevin from Los Angeles. What's going on, Kev? What's going on, Kevin? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm excited to meet you. We've been chatting back and forth on uh, Insta a little bit, and it's I'm excited to, to to meet you, man. But let's kick this off the way we always do. How did you become a Charger fan? Uh, I'm be honest. It wasn't that long ago, about the 2018 season. Nice. Uh, we were 25. My girl's dad had a party. I was just showing up trying to you know meet her dad. And um, I think it was the Tennessee Titan game in London that I sat and watched. And I was just, I've been a fan ever since. That's and awesome. Was, yeah. So, like, what, you know, what was it like, you know, finding out, you know, the Chargers were coming to L.A. and, like, that was going to be your home team now that you're you're in L.A. and you can actually have your team close by? I was kind of nervous at first. I ain't going to lie. I wanted them to stay in San Diego because I felt like they had a fan base there. Sure. And I'm a Padres sure. fan, too, so, you know. So, um, I, yeah, but when they moved, it was like, it was cool because I could go to the game. It's a home game. I live close to Inglewood, so I could go, you know, they, you know, be a fan. Like, I really enjoyed the move. But now I love it. Like, I'm really close to the uh, team, and I, I just love going to every home game I can go to. That's awesome, man. Well, and tell us, you know, your excitement level, because this is the first fan focus of the regular season, because we got a game coming yeah. up in a few days, man. So yeah. how, how are you feeling about this this upcoming game against the Dolphins? Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm going to be there, front row. Let's go. Charge zero, man. Hoping to see y'all. Can't wait to meet y'all if y'all do show up. Oh, we'll be there. It's my birthday. It's my it's my 23rd birthday, too, so. Oh, you know, shit. Big, Celebrate a birthday. Let's get a birthday present for you. Yeah, man. Trying to. I want a jersey, man. A jersey. Perfect jersey. <laughs> uh, oh. So, yeah. I'll be right there, man, front and center, man. Cheering on Herbert and the squad and hope we can pull this dub out. 30, a blowout. 31 blowout. You know what I'm saying? I love Hoping it. Hoping for a blowout. So what? So what do you in terms of like position groups or like a player who like when you show up to the game who are you most excited to see this year? Oh uh, man, uh, two. You know I've been watching him since he was at uh, Lawndale High. Big fan. You know one of my boys. Uh, he's a friend of one of my friends. So I don't oh, know him wow. personally, but I know I know about him. I've seen him play a few times. It's good like to have that person that like you've seen like you kind of like. Uh, play ball, so I'm proud of him coming out of LA and him and Dayon Healy, of course, Crenshaw boy. Yeah, so I'm happy for both of them. Yeah, that's awesome. I was so excited when we got them on the team. Hey, getting some locals and getting Kendricks back. We got we got the uh, the SoCal guys are are back on the team. Number six, I watched him at UCLA. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's exciting, man. There's so many different things that could happen Sunday. I'm just I'm feeling like it's going to be a continuation of what we did to the Dolphins last year. Uh, I, I hope we beat their ass. Man. I really do. <laughs> I love I it. I want to ask him. I love it. Yeah, you deserve it. It's your birthday. We got to come on, Chargers. <laughs> get Kevin what he wants for his birthday. A blowout win. <laughs> Let's go. A blowout win. So, um, what is your um, up to this point? What has been your best Charger Charger memory? Best Charger moment? I got so many. Um, I guess the first game I went to, you know. I kind of slipped on. I was going down, and I kind of slipped, and that's like that. That's why I met my girlfriend. Actually, oh, wow. I met her at the uh, Charger game. It was one of the best days of my life. I forgot what game it was. I think it was a Kansas City game when uh, Pat Mahomes first start. Uh-huh. I think when we got when we lost, of course. But uh, yeah, I met my girl there. You know, and it's been that's my favorite memory. It's my first ever uh, Charger game going to. I met the uh, love of my life, and you know, that was the best feeling. Uh, what a, that's an awesome story, man. Like that's so cool. You you big your first game and you meet your your girl. That's incredible. Yes, sir. 
So that's awesome. So, all right, well, I'm excited because I finally get to do this again. What is your score prediction for this game? Oh, man, this is... It ain't hard. 54 12. Let's go. <laughs> That's my shameless positivity right there. I love same it. As, I learned for the best. Same as, same as Lee Potter's did. I learned let's, from y'all. Let's go, man. Well, we're yeah. hoping you you get that birthday present you want, man. And we'll be we'll be there. So hopefully we can run into you. We'll be at Thunder Alley for a while. So come join us over there, man. I'd love we'd love to meet you. We'd love nothing more to meet y'all, man. All right, man. Well, it was a pleasure, Kev. Thank you so much for your time. And uh yeah, I look forward to look forward to meeting you in person, man. Me too. Well, Kevin, I, I thought I was hearing an echo from all the Kevin, Kevin, Kevin going on, but uh, wow, dude, Kevin what a squared. fan focus, man. What a, so what a great bolt prediction for the start of 54 the season. 54-12. Oh my Only God. Only field goals. That's Let's how you smoke imagine. these fools. <laughs> God, I, he was so cool. Like, I, I don't yeah. know. I just love fan focuses so much and meeting new people and it's going to be his birthday and he's coming to the game by himself. Like, if you guys see Kevin, if you yeah. see him anywhere around Thunder Alley, sing happy birthday. Sing happy birthday. Yeah, if you him see him, buy him a happy birthday beer or something. Take care of our Kevin because yeah. he's Please. celebrating his birthday out there um, by sick. himself. So lots of love and hopefully we get to see you in Thunder Alley, man. Big I'm also pulling for Thule. I'm so pumped. Yeah. I can't wait to see him on the field. I I don't know. That may be part of, part of my bolt prediction here. I'm not going to give anything away, but we'll see. Ooh, Ooh. I'm excited. Uh, and well, And just great stories, you know, what, just trying to like get in with the with the dad and and watching the the Charger Dude. game. The and I got a little. Don't be, don't be discouraged about how long you've been a Charger fan. No, oh you my just god, no. rock that with pride. We love yeah. it. I mean, I I think it's I think it's even more like I think it's cooler that we have these new fans that since we moved to L.A. that we're growing. You know, like I am just so stuck here in San Diego where everyone hates on me all the time for being a Charger fan and. Oh, I hate to charge. I'm like, screw you then. Let's just go get a bunch of LA fans then. Yeah. Yeah. Totally fine by me. I like hanging out with people that like me too, you know? <laughs> yeah. Come on. More Sad. people like Kevin, please. Yeah. More Kevs out there. Yes. Kevin, thank you so Not much. You. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> you wouldn't say anything like that about me. <laughs> Can't have any more of yous in the world. No, we don't need any more of yous. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much Thanks, for coming man. on, chatting with Thanks, my man dude. Kev. Uh, all right, folks. Time now to go on to Ask Bolt Fam. Start of the season edition. There's a lot of questions <laughs> here. <laughs> Rev that engine, baby. <laughs> we have stuff to talk about, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Time to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Okay, love you, boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam, and we start off with Dirty Sanchez. I love this name. I haven't heard it yet. Certified fresh. <laughs> Who asked the question? Hey, guys, love the show. You are my oasis in the desert they call the off-season. I'm from San Diego and am a Padres and Chargers fan. I've got a ton of anxiety about this upcoming season after seeing the Padres implode this year with all the talent on their roster. Please make me feel better and tell me why the Bolts will be different. K, love you, bye. Good question. Mm -hmm. that, but that's I don't a good know question. if I have an answer for you. <laughs> the, the good question is like, that is a great comparison. Like we are stacked. Yeah. We have a great team. Um, I think the difference between us is chemistry. I think the Chargers have going to have a lot more chemistry. And I think that they're going to be able to do the things that we got going doing last year. Mm -hmm. This was the first year for the Padres to like come together of mm -hmm. all these superstars and it just didn't work. Yeah. You have to get hot fast. I feel like that's the biggest part of I like team chemistry is like you start winning early. Everyone likes each other. Mm -hmm. um, if you lose early, like the Padres did, they just never really recovered. It's like our, our run differential is huge because when we win, we win by 10, mm -hmm. but when we lose, we've lost every one run game possible this year. We've not won a single extra inning game. Oh, God. Sorry, Padres. <laughs> I love them so much, but they're so hard to watch this year. Yeah. Um, not, but not our Chargers. Our Chargers are going to be very different. I can, we just got to get started it. quick. Yeah, yeah we got we to gotta get started quick here. We've gone through some of the, the hurt. I feel like what the Padres are going through this year is kind of what we went through last year. We had that studded, like star-studded team. 
that got hurt, underperformed a little bit, and now we're ready to rebound. Hopefully, yeah. we can go into this Charger season, win a Super Bowl, and we bounce back into the Padre season. They went through the crap, and then we bounce right into a World Series. Mm. That's what I'm. That's what I believe. That's your bold prediction. <laughs> that's my um, bold. You know, and, and I would have to also bold, say, wait, wait, my bold pod diction, pod diction. <laughs> whole other podcast. <laughs> It's inception. That's a that's a yeah. prediction instead of a prediction. Copyright, Kyle. Um, it's, a, it's like a Russian nesting doll. <laughs> the the other thing that uh, that I think you have to look to to look at is is really the big get this off season was Kellen Moore getting an offensive coordinator. One of the things that we struggled with last season uh, on offense, I feel like, is going to be completely different this season. Uh, having somebody like Kellen Moore calling the plays. Uh, I think that's really going to be the big get. That's going to be a big difference maker for getting this offense cooking quickly. Agreed. And uh, and we we didn't need to sign any big names this off season. So I, I feel like everybody is primed and ready to go for an amazing season. There, Dirty Sanchez. So thank you and welcome. For asking the question Don't and welcome, be a stranger. Yes, welcome. All right, let's move it on now to Zachary Shelton. Who asked the question? So my birthday is on Wednesday. It would be amazing to be a part of a round table of some of my favorite chargers as a fun gift. If you could have a round table of five chargers and just listen to them talk about their careers, who would you choose? For me, Philip Rivers, Justin Herbert, Antonio Gates, LT, Derwin James. What five would you choose? I, I think you got to, uh, for me, I got to throw, I, I like the old school stories. I just listened to a podcast today where Hulk yeah, Hogan better. was on a podcast yeah. and the stories that came out of that dude were the most entertaining shit. Like, and you, you don't have old, any 70 year old athletes. Those guys lived yeah. in a different era and got into some crazy True. shit that you can't well, get dude, into there was, anymore. There was no social media. No. There wasn't really like, intensive interviews like we have nowadays in the off season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't know anything about like the Kellen Winslow's. Like I don't have the in-depth interviews and conversations with some of the like charger greats that you have that with Justin and well, not as much with Justin because he doesn't talk to anyone, but like, <laughs> like the LT is just, LT is still on chargers, like yeah. media sure. team and stuff. Yeah. And Derwin James constantly, we get, we get like, Every practice, him walking on the field and walking off and interviews with how many thousands of people. But I agree, those old school guys, like uh I like Junior Seau to me would think would be a like an awesome to nice. hear some of his stories and yeah. growing up in Oceanside and being a Charger fan and kind of all what all that looks like would be it, Rodney Harrison is just a freaking machine. That was I, my, one of my favorite players. I think I do all quarterbacks. I do like Hadel. Mm. If this is like a fantasy situation, let's oh, go yeah. all Humphreys. the way back to the beginning. Hadel, Humphreys, Fouts. Rivers, Fouts. Oh, uh, oh that and, would be good. And, and, and Herbert? And, and get Herbert in there. I just want to see yeah. all of those quarterbacks interact together. That would, that would be, be my so ultimate round table. Be cool. You'd have to use a time machine and Justin would be like four at the round table <laughs> for when Hadel was alive. But it, I know he didn't die that long ago, but that would <clears throat> be my a, this, ideal no, set. All of them in their prime is what we're talking. Hell so yeah! Did you imagine that? Yeah, yeah, dude, I would, I would pay so much money to see that. <laughs> yeah, boy, th- those are both great answers. Uh, I, I don't know that I could necessarily top that. I would say, I mean, for me, you know, Phil, for me, the Philip Rivers era, you know, getting guys from that era, you know, yeah. Philip Rivers, all Antonio together, Gates, yeah. all together, yeah, uh, Sean Merriman. Uh, Chris Hardwick, you know, all those guys sitting together and who's a good, who's a good fifth for that. You know what, in, in, the, the in, a, in a world of fantasy, I don't know if it necessarily has to be players, but why not throw like Schottenheimer or like a coach in there or something like coach, that? Yeah. I think or that would be You could throw like an obscure player. Who's the coach of Michigan? He's on Harbaugh. 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 Yeah, he was a charger for like a year. That's true. <laughs> Throw yeah. him in there. Let's go. That'd Toss be interesting. In we He's play like, blitz with him all the time. We try to. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fired. It's my wish, Harbaugh. <laughs> Sit down. We're Start talking talking. chargers. Shut up, Harbaugh. <laughs> Oh, that'd be awesome. All right. Well, Zachary Shelton, first of all, happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday, and, sir. Yeah, happy uh, birthday, dude. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to JV, who asked the question. It's my time, boys. Football is here. Now for the question. 
in a recent video, Mike Dub, I think it was him, asked why we don't have powder blue pants. So that got me wondering, why don't we? And what do you guys think about powder blue plants with the gold jersey? <laughs> I would love the Navy approach to the powder blues. All powder blues would be sick. Yeah, all powder blue would be sick. With a white helmet, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And a white jersey powder blue pant would be sick, too. They did the gold instead of the powder blue pant. I just don't love Which the I'm gold. I'm okay with. Uh, the gold like is it. like a straight up like alternate, shouldn't be on the field jersey for me. Really? It's just, it looks, like it just a, doesn't look right up top. Like toss, yeah, it's like with the. Uh, Royal Better as an accent with the yeah. bolt as opposed to the full. It's like color. A, a shower. The main. You know I mean. Yeah, you don't want that. Mm. Yeah, pee pee pants. Pee pee pants. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, yeah, full powder I don't, blue would I don't, be so much fun. I've seen You'd some like um, full powder blue. <laughs> some mock. <laughs> I've seen some mock ups of a gold jersey. I don't love it. I think it feels like the powder they sell blue, a gold like jersey, the, I think, on the Chargers they store. Do. They yeah. do, yeah. But like the navy blue and the gold, to me, feels like that Pop Warner type of jersey. Yeah. I like the cleaner look of the powder blue and the white. So fresh and so clean. clean. It was so funny. I, heard, I remember the video he's referencing, and I think one of the offensive linemen was like, I hate the whites. It makes us look so fat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I, I, feel feel your, I feel your pain. That had to be an offensive line. Yeah, I think it was, was it Lindsley. <laughs> it was one of those guys. That's why none of us own white Oh, Slater. White it was Slater. Jerseys. Slater said that. It was mm. Slater. Yeah, I don't own a single white shirt in my entire fucking <laughs> yep. wardrobe. Not a single nope. one. Cannot do it. Black Charger jerseys would be sick. I don't know if feel good about that either. It's too close to the Raiders. Uh, people were pitching that also, and I was like, you know what? Uh, it's too. It doesn't look like our team. It looks weird. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Navy's that. nice, good, close, close enough. neighbor. Close too. enough, but no yeah. cigar. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, JV. Thank you for asking the question. Close uh, enough, but no handcuffs. Yeah, the <laughs> close, are, no they'll, they'll come to be eventually. I'm warming up, guys. The beginning of the season. <laughs> jokes are going to be flying soon, I promise. Here they come. Here they come. All right. Let's move it on now to Solohija. Certified Fresh. Solohija. <laughs> Based on how far he leaned into the screen. <laughs> the O's and to... the A's are now starting to look very similar, so I wanted to make sure I got it right. <laughs> uh, you've got a question? It goes something like this. If you could interview any of the players before the start of the official season to get a grasp of what's going on inside the team, who would it be? <laughs> Why? I love that voice so much. Um, the question can't is: be, if they'll can't be Justin you, Herbert. They have. The, here's the thing: I want to put a caveat to this question. If you're open to it, if you don't want it, okay. Fine. But if you're into it, <laughs> they have to tell you the truth no matter what. They can't like yeah, dodge yeah, yeah. shit. Mm, so right. one player that couldn't dodge your questions. They're like on a they're on one of the machines. It's like a lie detector. Yeah, you know, we give yeah, them it's we give you they're in the movies, the serum. They give you the serum. It's the like truth serum. Uh, it's like in yeah, true lies yeah. when he's sitting there like telling the truth and like I'm going to right. kill you. I'm gonna take his gun and shoot him. Like oh, that's the call. that's that's yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. we need to do. <laughs> True Lies, such a good movie. James Cameron right. rules. I have I have my answer. I would yes. do Keenan Allen because Keenan's Ooh. been around for so much. He, he knows the hurt. So he's been teams. a part of the hurt. He knows how to change that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's our he's our longest standing veteran. He's been there for so much. He could. I feel like he could give you an honest like, yeah, this team's really different. This is going to be a really good season, or like. I've been here before. This I I understand the hype. We're talented, but it's just not there. Yeah. I feel like he could be that guy that tells you that. That's a great call. I probably I might go the other way just because you picked that. I'm gonna go with somebody that has experience that is coming here for the first time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go Kendricks. Oh uh, yeah. Just because I want you know he's been on another team. He doesn't know what yep. the culture is. You kind of get beat the culture into you, but he's experiencing right. for the first time. So that would be interesting insight for me. Yeah. With the truth serum. I like that. I somebody that's won a Super Bowl, that. Adam. Think of somebody that's like, I've been there, I've seen it, and I, I would honestly be able to tell you if they got it. Our center. Yeah. I was going to say Corey Lindsley. Lindsay. Did he yeah. win a Super Bowl? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I mean, some uh, something like that. I think kind of gets similar vibes from both, you know, from both yeah. of you guys, and somebody that's been a part of a Super Bowl and you know works closely with Justin Herbert and the offense, getting some truth out of that would be. What and like thought? the new offensive coordinator is like a big deal. So the center, right. He'll know a little bit more of like, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. All right. 
So the Hija, we're off to a good start, guys. I'm feeling yeah, like those are good, good answers. Questions, guys. good answers. Thank Not you. To, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, it's almost as if don't we make it all downhill from here. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> this up right now. All right. Solahija, Solahija, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing it right, but thank you for asking the question. Don't be a stranger. Please. Uh, let's move it on now to Alex Bolt Up, who asked the question. It seems like the Chiefs don't want to pay Chris Jones what he's worth. This is on top of them underpaying Mahomes and Kelsey. Can we start calling the Chiefs what they are? A cheapskate franchise? FTC, K love you bye. What do you think? I think it's certified fresh, Alex. I'm sorry. There's a lot of bolt ups, a lot of Alex's and previous drafts. <laughs> and my apologies. You are certified fresh. I'm pretty sure. Fantastic. Um, but sure, I'm on, I'm on board. You want to talk? You want to throw some shit, sling some shit at them? I'm fine. Yeah, with that. It's just that's not fine. that's not a good look, though. Cause if they can be cheapskates and still win Super Bowls, that's just good on them. <laughs> I guess so. It's very, you know, very like realistic if answer. we could be a cheapskate and win Super Bowls, it's like cool. We didn't spend money and we won the Super Bowl. I wonder like, how these this... guys are willing. These guys are willing to pay for, play for us for less. That's mm-hmm. like uh, that's a shot back at us. But there, but this Chris Jones thing could be really big deal. Like, he's been so dominant for, for that sure. defense for so long, and they were sketchy. Yeah. Like the last couple of years, their defense was always sketchy, and they were always in nail biters. Talking to some of my Chiefs friends, so like. The, your best defensive player is no yeah. not going to play. That he's he, I read something. He's not going to play until the eighth after the eighth Dude, he, game. He um he posted a picture in a hot tub with a cigar today. Hmm. Like just chilling. That's not connected defense. <laughs> that's that's not connected <laughs> defense. No, there's no. no there's no Bluetooth going on there. There's no there's no. nothing connected. There's no at connectivity. All. So we play the Chiefs week six. Perfect. We shouldn't have to deal with them then. And then. The last game of the season will be against the Chiefs as well. So and he hasn't practiced it. Also, you know, guys that don't get warmed up and ready for it. You've seen mm-hmm. that. What happens to that before? Yeah. So it's an interesting take, Alex. We like it over here. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move yep. it on now to Daryl Twenty One, who asked the question. Hey guys, first and foremost, thank you so much. Oh, I received my patch this week, and it's running alongside with this new season. Bolt the f- up, hoo ha! <laughs> Now, my question for the week. Oh, here comes my question. Oh, (laughs) since we all know now who the 53 are, where are your hopes up and where do your concerns lie? So glad the season is finally here now and we get back to two episodes a week with you guys. Hoo-ha! Oh, FTR, FTB, and FTC. Oh, can't love you. Bye. (laughs) Hoo-ha. That is mid-season fucking oh. Pacino form right there. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Oh. Oh. Oh, I love, big man. <laughs> I love when you flourish these scripts with all those little interstitials. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, those aren't included in the script. <laughs> not all of them. There are some hoo-hahs written in there, but uh, not all of them. Oh, improv's excelled. Gotta spice it up sometimes. So. Improv's mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, interesting questions. So now Glad you know, got your patch. Yeah, glad you got the patch. First and foremost, yes. Uh, where are our hopes up and where do our concerns lie with when it comes to the 53 man roster? Hopes are the offense and <sighs> Kellen. That's the one thing I'm walking into Sunday. Most excited to see, cause we haven't seen them stretch that out yet or turn that car on. Even mm-hmm. we haven't seen that car in action. So let's see that yeah. thing go. Yeah. I, I can't help, but like, I don't know. I don't even want to talk about it because it's depth. <laughs> Like when you talk about the 53, you're talking about depth, right? And yeah. if you're talking about depth, you're talking about injuries. And I just don't even want to put that, put that out in the universe right yeah. now. I, I really don't. So I feel like, yeah, we're going to go with the coaching call. <laughs> we're going to go with, we're excited for coaches and yeah. we're worried about our defense referees. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the yeah. defense Bad play penalties. Calling. Well, I'm curious to see how we're going to call this game because the last time the coach Staley called against yeah, you the gotta, Dolphins, you he switch it up. dominated. So they're going to come out with something different, and he's going to have yep. to, you know, play that game of chess. So I think mm-hmm. that's maybe the offense and the defense that you're like, oh, what is it going to do? Yeah. But it's like all flowers for the for the offense because we haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So it'll be exciting. My hope is, you know, carrying four running backs on this team that somebody's able to get the running game going. Yeah. I mean, you've got four of these guys. Hopefully, I'm I'm sure one of them is going to be inactive come game day. It it does make me think like, what is that that load going to look like? Like, 
Yeah. With three guys, it still felt like Eck was on the field most of the game. You know, like the other yes. guys got a couple snaps here and there. Spiller never even made the active roster. I'm assuming that's what we're going to see is Elijah doesn't make the active roster most weeks. Yeah. Um, he's on the 53, but not the 40, 49 or mm-hmm. whatever, 48, 49, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I would assume is that ha- that's how they're treating it. But like, how does that, how is that all going to shake out with who's on the field? How much? Because X the guy and you got one year to get as much as you can out of him. So right. um, I think it'll be interesting to see how all that shakes out. Right. Running he's going to want to get the most out of it as well. So he can hit those incentives. <laughs> he's not going to want to come off that field. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He wants 20 touchdowns. Put me in sure. coach. I'm ready to play. Yep. Today. So Daryl 21. Thank you for Look asking the question. Look at me. Uh, let's move it on now. Center field. <laughs> Sorry, we had the put me in coach thing going. Yeah. So I just kept I'm ready to yeah. play today. <laughs> let's move it on now to Bolts and Bogies, who asked the question. Hot dog! We finally made it to the beginning of a new NFL season. I can count down the days on one of my four-fingered glove-wearing hands. <laughs> Hopefully the Lions can bite the Chiefs and that son of a bitch Patrick Mahomes in the ass and get them off to a 0-1 start. Wouldn't that be something? I can't wait to face off against those pussy porpoises from the swampland <laughs> in week one. Joey and Khalil are going to tear to a new one. Tyree Kill is going to have to file a restraining order against our corners, and this new Kellen Moore offense is going to whoop their asses all the way down to SeaWorld. Okay, time for me to take a chill pill. I thought I had a question, and now I can't remember. Oh, well. What is a drink that you all like? I'm going to try to find you guys at Thunder Rally and have a drink with you guys. It's the least I can do for you guys. Get me through this offseason with this amazing, shamelessly positive podcast. FTR, FTC, and FTB. Can't love you. Bye. <laughs> Pussy porpoises really that's, hit me. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's pretty funny. That's really Can't good. be our episode title, plan. but ah, God. Like asterisks. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> all right. Well, all of that for what our favorite drink. Is. I, I love it. A long walk. A long walk. Um, a favorite drink. I games at, at a I'm, Charger game. It's just beer. It's Modelo for me. Where? Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely where? a Modelo guy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or, yeah. or whatever you feel, whatever you have. Hey, yeah. listen, it's not whatever gets to us, it's listen. my new favorite. Yeah, yeah listen. <laughs> I'm We're pretty not much, a, pretty no, much a garbage not. disposal when it comes to Thunder Alley. Yeah. So throw it in, I'll grind it up. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Let's All go. right. Well, there you go. Bolts and bogeys. We're we're happy with every drink that we get. So thank you for asking the question. Uh, let's move it on now to Bolts Dan or Bolt Dan. Who asked the question? What games are you guys going to? And if you guys do come swing by our DHBC Ventura Canopy, I got a box of frosted mini wheats for you guys. Sorry, no signature. Bolt up Puro Chargers FTR. All right, so what games are we going to? And first and foremost, we are definitely stopping by the Die Hard Bolt Club. Bench. We're we going to stop by every tent. Alley. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You get away. You get <laughs> you away. Get away. <laughs> you get away. <laughs> um, but as far as the games that we're planning on going to, obviously, week one, we're all going to be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the next game? Where are the Ember? It depends. Kyle's got a baby coming, yeah. so that throws off his schedule. Kyle getting a, a baby. It a little bit of a tough. wrench. Yeah. yeah. But Adam and I are hitting the away at Arrowhead, the Chiefs game. Yes. And we just booked our shit to do the Green Bay game. Yes. Oh. So we're going to, we're taking Josie, my wife. Um, she's going to travel up with just us. Just you three? Pilgrimage, yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're going to go do it. <laughs> and we're meeting up with the brisket Thanks broads. for the heads up. Well, you have a baby I, coming. Yeah, you had a baby. bother you. <laughs> just keep me in the loop. <laughs> Jeez. Be nicer about the goddamn cereal. Don't move for us, <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> right now. Oh, you just found out about it just now. Well, how I else would I have found out about it? <laughs> how did this happen? You didn't tell me. I thought I did. Sorry, I'm embarrassed. I feel bad. 
Communication yeah, is top notch here at the Chargers. I promise you, you are not taking home those frosted mini weeds. They're just coming right here. They're going to sit on this desk and live here. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, yeah, we're going to uh, the Green and then Bay Denver. game. And then hopefully Denver. And then in Denver in December. So the Royal like Blue game. That's the Royal Blue Royal game. Royal Blue. Royal Blues. So. And it's when Gatesy's being, no. Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah, yeah. That's the Gates, That's the Gates, yeah. Gates induction in Hall of Fame. Yeah. So that that is our hope uh, to hit up those games, uh, and the rest, sadly, I don't think we're going to be able to make for one reason or another. Mostly, baby, because Kyle tends to. Scoop I'll be up at a couple. Rest. I'll be at a couple other ones. I don't know. Ex- I can't remember exactly which ones I was going to. I was going to try to go to the Ravens game with my brother in law. He's going to the Bears He's from Maryland or whatever. No, the Bears game is when the babies do. Oh, like that exact day of. So I will not be at the Bears game. Got it. Um, but yeah, there was a couple other ones that I'll I'll pop in. But us three, it seems like it's only going really going to be Miami and then the Denver game at the end yeah. of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So wish we could right. do more. We have the season tickets. We I know can't always the goal is always up. to go to as many as we possibly can, but for usually Work. reasons, yeah, we can't. So, but I think we're going to hit probably two to four or five games. And Kyle will hit just as many as we hit. Cause he'll be able to go to the local yeah. stuff. So there you go. Bolt Dan. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Jeremy S who asked the question. I watch slash listen to, GMFB while I work, and it seems like the whole year's coverage has been about Aaron Rodgers. I'm so tired of this guy. Everything he does seems so calculated, and the arrogance just wafts off him like my dad's old sofa farts. My mom loves him, by the way. Rogers specifically, not my dad. They divorced in the 80s. Oh, God. I digress. Holy shit. Anyway... It made me wonder who other people don't like and why and thought it might be fun to find out if you're game. Not sure how shamelessly positive it is, but I'm positive these people annoy me whether they're good at football or not. In no particular order, Aaron Rodgers, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, George Burrow, and Cole Beasley. Oh, and some honorable mentions for coaches, Mike McDaniel, Sean Payton, John Harborough, and Dan Campbell and Nick Sirianni. P.S. Peter Charger, that's intentionally misspelled, uh, just said on the current GMFB episode that he thinks that the Chargers are coming this year and could pick off Kansas City. Woohoo! Thanks, <laughs> Kale of you by Jeremy. This is a good one. <laughs> I honestly, I stopped watching Good Morning Football when Kay Adams left. Like that was kind of when it just kind of just stopped for me because they always mm. they're always just just talking shit. It feels mm. like I don't know, just not yeah. my vibe. <laughs> yeah, it does feel a little bit trash talky, and that's like they just feel like they're. <laughs> I hate to say it, they feel like social media hosts. You know, like they're just trying <laughs> yeah. to spam, like throw stuff out there that gets picked up and run with type yeah. of stuff. Yeah, uh, it like does feel that way. Top five countdown of most likely to do this and that. It's like, all right, I don't really care that much. Uh, but I mean, Peter, Peter's always been kind of an avid Peter of the, of the, the best. Yeah, he's a straight shooter. He's the straight shooter of the group. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, but that's not the question. The question is uh players that we dislike or annoy us. What do we um any- I don't know how Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. That is <laughs> the most wife. annoying athlete on the yeah. plan, on planet Earth. Yeah. yeah, it's so bad. And that QB one or that QB behind the scenes thing QB. that Netflix put out. Yeah, dude, holy crap! I watched the trailer for it and I almost killed myself because he's <laughs> so annoying. He's like acting like his legs falling off and he needs help, and then he goes in. And he's like, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. And he goes in. It's like. Then clearly you were fine. Just stay on the field, you big baby. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That guy, of all that of the guy. athletes in the world, he is my least favorite. Tom Brady is a close second, but yeah. he's gone now. He's retired, I right. think, officially. So I believe so. Yeah. I still I don't can't hate him as much, but my dislike for Derek Carr is still alive. Derek Carr is well. bad. Yeah. The he's fact that so he tried cringy. to talk crap to Joey Bosa, it's mm-hmm. like you're and an idiot. Fake accent. He's just so cringy, you know. Yeah, everything yeah. he says. Cringe. Yeah, Max Crosby's up there too for similar reasons. Just that guy's just stuff a that dick. he said. Yeah, he's just, just a, a dick. dick. Um, 
I can't think of Let's ride. How do we feel about Russell Wilson? He's not a threat. So it doesn't he's not a, me. yeah, he's, he's just, actually hurting the Broncos. This is great. Yeah. yeah. It, it was like, it, it's more groaning. It, it's not, I'm not annoyed by him. I'm just like, ah, God, here we he, go. He's kind of annoying though. Like, you know. but think about if he was good and he acted the way that he acted, you'd be like, oh my yeah, that God. Guy's you're true. Worst. That's true. You yeah. Know? And yeah. maybe he will be better this year and then you'll hate him. That's very true. Sure. He's pretty check bad. Back, check back next year. Check back halfway through the season. I'll let yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, but great some question. Some of those there. other guys, what's the, um, why can't I think of the name? Rant, the Rams coach. McVay? McVay. Yeah, McVay, to me, McVay is Rose. way up there. As yeah, super annoying. especially after hard just, knocks. Dude, McVay he just Rose. is such a know-it-all, thinks he's so cool. and Right. God, he's the yeah. He's pretty. He's pretty bad. Like he he, he that, talked like, about leaving the Rams because they weren't any good anymore. I'm like, you're the really? worst, dude. <laughs> yeah, like he considered quitting this last off season. He's like, really? I don't know if I'm gonna come back because they just don't like they're so young and they don't Yeesh. have a lot of players. I'm like, yikes! You just walked into a Super Bowl roster and now you're gonna walk away. Because, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is hard work. I don't want to do. I don't want to do yeah, that. Like, <laughs> Nobody told me worst, this was dude. part of the job. No. So. <clears throat> well, right. well, well, I want. I just want to propose this. What's your favorite non-charger? To keep it shamelessly positive. Favorite non-charger. Oof. You know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. I mean, I don't hate Josh Allen from Buffalo. I think he's. You know, yeah. he seems like a good guy. Um, I think there's a lot of good guys in, in the league. I just don't, I, I you know, I haven't seen like their. Who's your ups. favorite? The question. I don't know. Well, yeah. who would you buy a jersey for? Not on the charge. Oh, like if you had, you had, you had to buy one. Who would you buy a jersey for? Uh that sucks. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> That's a tough one. I don't know why I made this question way harder. I kind of I don't know. It. So I'll say this name. Not, not I don't know anything about like his personality. I mean, like he might be the biggest asshole in the world, but I don't know him. So the only reason I would say this guy is because of how much of a run that he did near the end of last season. And I would say maybe Brock Purdy, you know, to be mm. the very last person drafted and then to be making a run in the playoffs yeah. and have the success. Mr. Irrelevant. You do. And yeah. now he's the starting guy. And now he's, he's the starting Lance guy. Kicked out of San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah I, I'd hate to wear it, but I wouldn't be totally embarrassed to wear a Bosa 49er jersey. There you go. Just because mm-hmm. of the ties. At least it's a blood relative to my guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that. Because my thought, just as you guys were talking, is the opposite of that. Because I couldn't wear the jersey because it says Kelsey on the back, but Jason Kelsey is kind yeah, of the, the lineman for yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah, the Phil, yeah, and they he's have a little podcast, and he's, he's pretty funny. funny. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty real. I think he's. That's, I think that's he's the move. Dude. The nondescript lineman jersey, or like a yeah. punter, or like somebody that doesn't <laughs> really matter, like that kind of thing. I'm in that. That's good. Yeah. Cool. That's a tough question. That, yeah. That's good. I like that curveball, Kevin. Thank Look you. Just keeping the Thank good you. questions, good answers going. I'm here to help. Jeremy asks, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Landon Sumner, who asked the question. To the Charger chat, Charger fans, and all my fellow Americans, the moment you have all been waiting for has arrived. This Sunday at exactly 125 Pacific time, our boys will begin their conquest to the Holy Land. While we are all full of pure determination to hoist the body at the end, do not forget that the road will not be easy. There will be tragedies. There will be heartbreaks. But do not let that discourage you. Do not let that break your will. Do not pray for easier wins, but for stronger men. Ask not what Herbert can do for you, but what you can do for (laughs) Herbert. And what we, Charger Nation, can accomplish is absolute and unwavering support for our boys in blue. What Charger Nation can and will accomplish is shameless positivity no matter the outcome, no matter the result. We will show up and cheer until there is no cheering left to be done. The cost will be great. The sacrifice will be substantial. But I promise you, we, the Charger fans of the world, will see the Los Angeles Chargers host the trophy of all trophies 
and we will party like it's 1963. <laughs> My only question, are you ready for week one? That was awesome. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> that was so good, Landon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Ask not what Herbert can do for you, but what, but you, what, can you, for what you can do for Herbert. That's so goddamn good. I'm yeah, so ready. You got me fired up, Landon. Honestly, got, I was getting like worked up. <laughs> I don't want to go to sleep good, tonight. No, I'm going to be a problem. It's going to be a rough week, man. Just constantly going to bed going, ah. Oh. Just I'm just like thinking through my work obligations. I'm like, okay, well, I just have this one thing left. I got to get go. done. I just got to check it and off then the we list. can get cruise control right into the weekend. Yeah. <sighs> this is going to be the most cruisy week of all time. Honestly. <laughs> Can't wait. We are ready. Landon. So thank ready. you for asking the question. Good to hear from you. Great Let's move it on now to swipe of visuals who asked the question. Hey guys. Did y'all see the brisket bras on the Chargers versus Dolphins prediction video the NFL posted? Anywho, stay tuned for the Chargers Dolphins game day edit on Twitter. We do not call it X here. And K, love you, bye. All right. Yeah, they, yes. yeah, they got a good solid 12, 14 frames on there. That was awesome. It was quick. <laughs> it, was. it was quick, but we we can always spot it. That's the, the best thing about the brisket broads. It's like, yeah. you could look at a sea it's of Charger undeniable. fans and you could be like, yeah. there they are. I see I them. See them. <laughs> yeah. It's the easiest <laughs> right game of Where's Waldo of all time. And they're time. always in the front row. That makes it doubly easier yeah. <laughs> to find they don't them. mess around. No. Um, yeah. We saw them. <laughs> no, and I'm we're excited for your for your edit as well. I'm yes. all about your graphics. Yeah. Always excited for the edits there, swipe of visuals. Hope college is going all right. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to FN Dooley, who asked the question. Last week, before we can pick the games apart, all week I hear the pundits asking or stating that the Chargers can't get over the hump. From a Charger fan originating in 1976, I can concur. Every year springs new hope. This year is no different, but it's not hype. This team is stacked, locked, and loaded. I have 47 teams to compare, and yes, we have had stacked teams before, and yes, we could not get over the hump. Always something, but that was then. This is now. The team can compete and win against anybody. The team is like never before. Do not underestimate the value of that. At this point, what does the world want to see to drop the narrative that the Chargers cannot get over the hump? You win it all and then it is done and buried forever and ever? The Bills and Vikes have been to the Super Bowl four times and never won. Are they over the hump? I know you guys are shamelessly positive, and I love you for it. I know you had already declared uh, that they are going to go 17-0 and and win the Super Bowl, which clearly is an over-the-hump exclamation point. My question is this. Specific to the narrative that the Chargers cannot get over the hump short of 17-0 and and a Super Bowl win, what does over-the-hump look like for you? Consider this. There are 12 teams that have never won a Super Bowl. That is over 30% of the league. Four teams have never even been to the Super Bowl. Mathematically, statistically, luck is raw, you name it. We are due. We are talented enough. We have paid our dues. But even after 47 years of not getting over the hump, I would still say that today my answer would be to make it to the divisional championship game. Then next year, we can talk about getting over that hump if you want. But given where this team has been to me, that should shut everybody up. Bolt up, motherfuckers. Let's go. (laughs) This is going to be a lot of fun. FTC. That was awesome. All right. You guys are really coming for it. You guys are ready for week one. You guys have done your homework. Holy <laughs> shit. That was like, no, I factually, it just blew my mind. Like, yeah, I forgot that there's 30% of the league hasn't, yeah. won, a, hasn't won a Super Bowl. It's so a lot of teams. Yeah. Why not us? Why yeah. not us? So, the yes, our, our shameless positivity is always 17 and 0 Super Bowl winners. But the idea of just strictly getting over the hump. What would What's that entail? That, the that's the question. That the hump is, to me is Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Patrick yeah. Mahomes and the Chiefs so in the regular the season. AFC West, 
No, hold on. Uh, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, yeah. regular season, that's hump one. Hump two. Oh, there's a lot of humps. Uh, this, this is, this a, is camel. a camel for sure. <laughs> humpy. Hump two is Very getting, over, humpy. getting humpy. over that first playoff game. That's hump two for Justin Herbert. After yes. that, I think it's pretty fair, clear sailing um, for me. That's not a, that's not I, a bad answer. I just don't think that at the end of the end of the season, if we're not in the AFC Championship, I'm not like yeah we've we've gotten rid of those demons of like we're not that team. Mm-hmm. In my head, like to get over the hump of what has plagued us, you got to get to the AFC Championship. Yeah, that, I, I I don't know. That's just how I feel like. We win the AFC West and we lose first round of the playoffs. I'm going to be like, yep, we still are not over the hump. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> it's a good step in the right direction. But I think unless you get to the AFC championship, you're not over the hump, the yeah. metaphorical hump. Yeah. 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 Winning the AFC West, I think I think Kevin's right. that That's the first hump that you have to get over because it's always going to be the Kansas playoffs, Chiefs. Playoffs get so much easier if you can do that. You're yeah. putting yourself yeah. in a position to be a lot, home field advantage and just be a better better position in general. Yeah, if you can if you can sweep the Chiefs in the AFC West, that's a good sign that you are getting ready to get over that hump and do like both you and Kyle said, is getting to that championship game, that AFC championship game, that is really going to be a, a, a mark for yeah. this team to say that we are now over the hump. And if they can take it all the way to the end, baby, you're, you blew past. We, we are humpless at that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. We are with just a horse now. We are Sans yeah. hump. Yes. Yeah. We're Sans just a hump. funny looking horse at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so, FN Dooley, great question. Awesome. Thank you for asking it. Let's move it on now to Unanimous. <laughs> Who asked the question, would you prefer Staley to focus on being a head coach and let the defense be called by Ansley or to keep doing what he has been and calling defense? I, what do you think, Kyle? I think that, you know, we talked about this a couple episodes ago, as far as Ansley being able to call a defense for San Francisco, if that was something that spilled over into the regular season, would that be a good or a bad thing? I think that the the main selling point of Coach Staley was that he was a quarterback, that he has this offensive background, but then he was a successful defensive coordinator in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So he has this like marriage of both. And I think as a head coach, you can have an ultimate avenue of being able to influence both. Mm -hmm. Right now, with his duties of play calling as a defensive coordinator, the amount of time in the week doesn't change. You, you, I just don't think you have enough time to have an influence on the offense. I think I would love to see him give up play calling duties and just be a head coach so that he could have his hand in both all week on game day. You can have like a conversation with Kellen Moore at halftime of like, dude, what's going on? If you're the play caller on defense at halftime, that halftime is not long. You don't have time to go be messing around dilly dallying with everybody. You got to lock it up and figure out what you're going to call on defense. The second half. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I would prefer a head coach. That's a head coach. And that you have the guy calling plays, even if throughout the whole week, you're telling him this is what you're calling in this situation. That's fine. But let him take over that pressure of calling plays. So you could focus on that. Hey, it's fourth and one. What are when or like, hey, it's third and six. Are we going for it on fourth and two? And you can have a little bit more of like a fully committed mindset towards the overall game of what's going on. Because mm-hmm. I've done both. I've been a def- defense coordinator that's called plays, and I've been a head coach, and I've been a head coach that calls plays. Like it definitely takes a big part of your brain and your just ability on game day. You you have to prepare so much to call plays that mm-hmm. I don't know how he does it. Yeah. Well, it seems like we're kind of set up with the uh, Kellen Moore hiring. I think that was maybe why Kellen kind of took the job as well. It's like he was getting kind of hamstrung. He knows, yeah. He was getting hamstrung in Dallas. He was getting, you know, criticized and his game plans probably weren't being maximized because of the the coach over there. So I think maybe Mm -hmm. that's, if you do that, that might affect what he's capable of too. In a a weird roundabout way. I, 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 I completely agree with you, Kyle, but I think there is an element to that that, you know, could be affected if you did that as well. Well, you can, ha- you can still handle it in a certain way. That's professional. I feels like in Dallas, McCarthy, McCarthy was like, this is what we're doing. Suck it up and do what I tell you type yeah. of type of a mentality. 
Yeah. Which yeah. that's not effective anywhere. That's not a healthy work environment. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Quit trying to score so many points. Yeah. Come on. What are we come doing on, here? We're blowing here. these guys out of the water. Stop it. Score us some. Not fair. <laughs> that's not fair to them. Look at them. They're sad. <laughs> All right. Unanimous. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Bobby Caldrone. Bobby, who asked the question. Back from a long off season and can't wait to BTFU twenty plus times this year. Super Bowl incoming. There's nothing that gets me through the ups and downs of the season like the CC, fellas. Game one. How do you see Staley and McDaniels approaching this game differently than last year? Can't love you, bye. Bolt up. It's Week one question. is so hard. Week one is so hard, dude. Like, yeah. There is a lot of turnover on these rosters every year. Guys already hurt for the Dolphins. You don't really know what it's going to look like. It feels like with some running back depth down, they're going to have to try to air it out a little bit. Um, I don't know. I don't, I've never seen Staley aggressively change his play calling. It seems pretty consistent that this is just who he is and you're going to have to come beat it. Um, but last year, we didn't have Derwin James against the Dolphins. That was kind of the main thing that we thought was like, we simplified things down and guys were able to play fast and that's why we were effective. So it'll be interesting to see what it looks like with Derwin on the field and does it get too complex and allow for a couple more big plays. I mean, the Dolphins last year, their biggest play was Tyreek Hill recovering a fumble Fumbles and running it back around. for a yeah. touchdown. You know, like that was their biggest play of the game. So um, does does Derwin help? I think it's like a fun experiment to see because like Derwin went down and our defense almost played better once he right. was out. Yeah. Um, now you add Derwin back in with a very similar supporting cast. Um, does it get better or how like they think that'll be the big thing of what we change from a defensive standpoint is now Derwin's in the game. So it, it, it does feel a little bit like a, it's a different defense. You have Derwin, Eric Kendricks, JC Jackson on the field. Those are three pretty impactful guys. Joey Bosa that wasn't on the field. That They're getting game. a totally different defense yeah. than they saw last time we played them on all yeah. levels. So mm -hmm. I think the problem, honestly, if you look back at it, I think they to a drop the ball, but pun intended. Like he, <laughs> you, I think if they're going to try and win, they're going to try test out our new run defense. I think that's probably yeah. what they're going to try and do a little bit more than they did last time. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully with our new linebacker um, with Kendrick and kind of the, some more new D line men in this rotation, we can shut that down and then make two a beat us. I want to, I want to see that not only for myself, I want to see that for all these dumb dolphin fans who right. have been talking about how much better Tua is than Herbert. And that's just insane. So um, that's what I think is probably going to happen. Yeah. Exciting to see. We'll find out what happens. But Bobby Caldrone, thank you. Good, Good to, to see hear you, from Bobby. You again. Yeah. yeah, I love. I love seeing. We were just talking about this before. Like, love seeing these names that we haven't seen in a hot minute. So regular we'll season names. Let's yeah. go. It's like the it's like the starters that don't play in the preseason. Yeah, they're like, I don't want to get hurt. I don't, I don't want to waste yeah. my good question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love that. Don't Bobby. Want to pull index finger. <laughs> no, yeah. no typing. Bobby, thank you for asking the question. <laughs> Let's move it on now to SRP Dad, who asked the question. I love listening to you guys every week. I'm not sure how you do it with kids, work, and everyday life, but I sure do appreciate it. Big props to Wool Doggy for never missing an episode since I've been watching. <laughs> Darius Davis took a punt to the house this preseason. Miami had a punt return for a TD. Uh, one Darius Davis... Uh, game one, Darius Davis. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Okay. Okay, love you. Bye. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. huge. <laughs> yeah. Um, excuse me, Darius Davis. <laughs> I think they're going to have to lock him up. He's going to be that good. You know what I mean? You feel me? I'm I'm curious to see <laughs> how, how the kickoffs are going to be. No, I got it. Yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it on point. Sorry. Uh, Darius Davis. I'm curious what's going to happen with those kickoffs. Like how, how those are going to be fielded. Are Treated they all going to be regular touchbacks? Yeah. Yeah. They're just going to all be touchbacks. It's just going to be. So good. really it's going to be the punts. Those are going to be the, the big punts. moments that like, everybody hold your breath. Let's see what's going to happen. And uh, oh, I'm already like stressed about it. I'm excited, but, but it's just usually there's only a couple of punts a game, maybe one or two that he actually gets a chance to return, you know? Right. It's like if they're down from the 50 yard line in, 
it's a fair catch because mm-hmm. it's just not enough field for it to happen. So right. we have to like stop them deep in their territory to even see Darius do anything. This is a positive thing way to look at it. If we do, that means our defense is playing amazing Solid. and he gets a lot yeah. of opportunities and is able to run one back. That it that means Darius goes off and our defense is going off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Love it. Love it. SRP dad. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Friar Bolt. Who asked the question? Are you guys ready for this shit or what? <laughs> Chargers put a whooping on Tua last year. Imagine us at full strength with this defense. Tua will be definitely poor in his diaper this week. What defensive player do you guys think will have the biggest impact this game? Okay, love you. Bye. Pua. That's funny. Pua. Pua needs diaper. All right. Biggest, most impactful defensive player. Biggest impact. I got mine. Go. Say it. Don't keep Um, the secret. I think it's going to be Joey Bosa. Yeah. I really think it's going to be Joey Bosa. I think he's going to get a couple sacks. I think he's going to be dominant. I think he's going to play pissed off. I think all of those things are going to happen for him because he was, you know, the last time he was on the field, he was making some bonehead plays. I feel like he's got a lot to pay back his teammates, and I think he's just going to fucking go off. Yeah, I really do. I I don't know why. I think Zant is going to have a big game. I, I like that. Tua, Tua loves to throw the ball over the middle. And with Zomp playing in that slot, I think it's going to up his opportunity for interceptions. I really do. Out, out in the corner, like there's only so much you can do out there. Um, I feel like putting Zomp inside more in the action, I think he's going to be able to jump some of that middle of the field stuff a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to think of a guy outside of the normal like the Khalil Max, Joey Bosa, Derwin James, like those guys are always going to have a huge impact. Right. Um, but I think Zalt is going to be, I don't know, dude, in that playoff game, the interception, like he's just a big play guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's, I think it's, I think he's going to have a good week one. I think he's got a lot to prove too. Losing that outside corner position, getting switched, people doubting him. I think I, I'm excited for what he's going to do. Same. Same. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, and you just said it, you know, that it's an easy to call, but it's going to, I think Derwin James is also going to be one of those guys, especially after seeing him in person when we went to that first week one game and he was like sneaking up to do sacks on, on Derek Carr last year. I think we're going to yeah. see some sneaky plays like that as well of him just kind of coming up and just tackling Tua from the side and letting, and, and, ah. Uh, it's going to happen. It's going to be so good. <laughs> so many impactful defensive players there, Friar Bolt. But thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to a Thayer Kader. A Thayer Kader. Who asked the question? Nice. Bulldog, my baby. Question for my guys. Pick one player, offense and defense, that will be an impact on Sunday's win versus Miami. I'm taking Bosa, baby. Three sacks, two forced fumbles. Chargers win 31-21. Let's go. FTR Herbert MVP, baby. Three love sacks. It. I love it. A fear. I think we're on the same page. I didn't <laughs> know you were. Two forced fumbles. fumbles. I, I'm all about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, we just kind of talked about the Defensive impactful players. Let's look on the offensive side sure. uh, for impactful players. What do we think? Uh, who's going to be the most impactful player? <sighs> go ahead, Ka. I went first. I'm going to go with Keenan Allen. I was just about to say uh, Keenan Allen. I, know, I was oh, too. I was going to say sorry. that too. <laughs> on three. Sorry. One, two, three. Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. He's yeah. just, I mean, this whole preseason with what we've heard of him coming out of camp, I don't know if I've ever been more excited for a, a player to show us what he's got. I mean, People are saying like career year, he's ready to like blow up. And last year he just dealt with so many injuries that it just sucks so hard. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm I think Keenan is gonna have a huge, huge game. Not yeah, I would say um I'm gonna say Quentin Johnston, man. I feel like because of how little tape obviously they have with him and how he how good he was. Uh, in his both his college year and then just seeing the few plays that we saw from him in preseason. And I'm just, I, I feel like he's going to be the low man on the totem pole. They're going to be guarding Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Quinn Johnson is going to find a way to get open and, and just get 
yards, get touchdowns. I think that's going to be a sneaky, impactful player. Yeah, because he's offense. going to have to maximize his opportunities with yeah. you know Palmer being as three. he should. Yeah, so I like it. All right, there you go, Athir Kadir. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Pink Unicorn, nice. who asked the question. <laughs> Sup, chat bros. I am so stoked to get back to Thunder Alley. It's been like a hundred years since we've had football. I'll make this quick so we can get back to bolting the f up, okay? <laughs> this Sunday, would you rather uh, one, Darius Davis takes the opening kickoff to the house. Uh, number two, we defer and JC Jackson gets a pick six on the first play. Whoa. Or three, we drive it right down the field and Herbert runs it in from the 15. Anyways, thanks for putting in all the hard work in the offseason and keeping us hyped for this year, dudes. As always, f*** the Raiders and K-Love you, bye. All right. This, this whole question made me smile the whole time we <laughs> were reading it. Every one of those, those options. All good options. Yeah. This is such a good question. But if you had to pick one, what would it be? Uh, I, I know mine. I I'll know go mine. first since you well, two. On, on, three, on three, why don't we just say the number? What number? Yeah. B. <laughs> no, we're not doing that shit again. I'm not falling prey to that again. One, two, or three on three. Okay. One, okay. two, three, one. Two. two. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Me and Will Dog agree. Yeah, but just imagine the, the first play touchdown, yeah. Darius Davis. That's, that's an exciting play. There's no doubt but about it's that. It's still the first play on defense, JC Jackson pick six. Yeah. That'd be cool too. This is like a Sophie's choice. I mean, the JC uh, Jackson one, that's huge coming yeah, from the guy like that deal with that injury. Yeah. yeah. Ultimate redemption. Yeah. And he was, like, in. he was not good. It's not like he got hurt and he was having a great season. He was playing no. pretty poorly. Yeah. And then got hurt and we paid him a gajillion dollars. Right. And it's like we haven't received any return on that investment. Yeah. So to get it right away and like that confidence that that would give to him and like JC. Darius Davis will have a role on the team, but how much of a role is pretty limited. JC's on the field every defensive snap. Mm -hmm. So that guy's gotta gotta get it going. Yeah. I think honestly, number three could be the most fun just because you would be I think so that's happy. the most likely. You would be so uh, happy yeah. for so long. You'll have five, four or five minutes of just ha ah, mm -hmm. hey. Like the whole yeah. all the way down the field, you get all these plays, not just one play. And then so, he runs it in and from then the runs 15. it in. Yeah, I don't mm. know. These are all great. Can't all these happen? Yeah, can't can't we have all three? Can we have all of them, please? Pink unicorn. This is such uh, a great question. Sick. <laughs> uh, we we get the ball, we run it back, then we kick it off. They touch back, and then we pick six of them, <laughs> and, then, and then we and kick it off, and then three and out. We get it punted back. We drive down. <laughs> Justin runs it in. Holy shit! We're up twenty-one, 21 to nothing, nothing in the first quarter. <laughs> I shit. mean, th that might be our like oh, collective um, bolt. You know, bolt Shamelessly prediction. Shamelessly positive sure. take. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Pink Unicorn, thank you for asking the question, and we go out of Ask Bolt Fam with Rebolted two thousand six. Who asked the question? So, after making the roster, Dotson wasn't the placeholder for a cut. Turns out it was Horvath. I'm sending my deepest apologies to Mr. Peckar for jinxing Horvath in a previous Zoom hangout. Roses are red, violets are blue. The season will be sweet. Get you another Horvath. <laughs> So since Dodson is here to stay, do you think he takes an inactive role on game day for a while, or do you think they roll deep on a running back committee behind deck? It's hard to see which guys behind deck you put in for what situation. It'll be interesting to see snap counts each game. I'm not sure how great he was on special teams either. Another reason for the possible inactive role, still think he has a chance to be the future if we cook him a from a raw steak to a medium well steak, you know what I mean? Just didn't expect this big of a jump from the Chargers. Also, I'm seeing 2020 after my matchup with Kevin. I'll be sure my D minus rookie squad, fantasy squad, beats some uh, vitamin D into your Telesco mini wheats box. K love you, bye. All right, so. Revolted is in our fantasy league, and I'm going heads up with him. And he yes. messaged me on the side and was like, 
you want you want to sweeten this pot? So we got twenty bucks on it. So <laughs> <laughs> extra twenty. Ah, oh, that's <laughs> all right. Let's go. I'm trying. Let me. I want to pull it up here. I want to look at the. Uh... But whose team is going up against who? All right, so you've got... So it's Aaron Rodgers against Jalen Hurts. Movement. Aaron Rodgers is going up against Buffalo. Jalen Hurts up against New England. You're projected 94. He's projected 88. It's going to be close. No, those projections are bullshit week one. They, they, they readjust everything so hard. So I could see this being a rough one, but I feel pretty confident. I, I don't know. Can't... You got Keenan Allen. You got Gerald Everett. I just hope your Venmo's ready, rebolted, because I'm going to need some cash pretty quick after yeah, this. Yeah, Venmo. None of this cash ad business. We're not no. drug dealers for Pete's sake. We're Venmo people. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, that's not the question. The question no. is, uh, the role of Dotson and the loss of Horvath, uh, Dotson being on the team, could you, see, could you honestly see us having four running backs active on game day? No way. No. No way. <laughs> He's, well, we didn't see four running backs making the <laughs> the fifty three, <laughs> and sure. now it, it's just too. You need more players on other positions. You can't have four running backs hanging out on this. Three other running backs hanging on the sidelines. You mm -hmm. just can't do that. Yeah. He's going to yeah. be there in the wings, ready to go. He'll be he'll be ready for if somebody has a week where they need to take a step back. He'll be the third guy. He's going to be rotating in and out based on mm -hmm. what the what that's like. And I feel good about it. it what was our fourth string running back last year? Anyone? Roundtree. He was third. Was he? Yeah, we didn't have oh, a Spiller. Spiller. Spiller was fourth. Yeah. Yeah. So like we didn't even see him play. So right. I think that kind of he was inactive though. Yeah. But if he does get on the field, I think he'll do some cool stuff. And who knows? We'll see. We'll see like what the game plan is. Because last year it was like very straightforward approach every single week. We'll see mm -hmm. what coach um what Kellen um Kel Coach Moore has up his sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm I it, how disappointed would you be if it was like Joshua Kelly or Spiller that was inactive on game day. I would be a little shocked, honestly. I would be too. Yeah. Yeah. No way. Not this early. No. Week one, you you, you go with the uh, the guys that have been. You there. know those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there you go. Rebolted 2006. Thank you for asking the question, and thank you everybody for asking questions and ask well, fam. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, but that I think is going to do it for this episode of charge chat. Uh, any final thoughts there, gentlemen, just counting down the hours to this thing. Get to so Sunday, get on yeah, this plane, on. get out to LA, man. Oh my yeah. God. Looking forward. We've got another episode this week, folks. Friday. We'll be talking. We'll have some bolt predictions lined up for you. Yeah. Some bolt beats. Our some first one experiences. Of the we got some Jesus. shit coming. It's coming. Ah. Uh, I'm got so a shit storm coming. A shit. shit storm coming. You better be ready. <laughs> and hell's coming with me. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. It's regular season time. K, love you. Bye. K, love you. Bye. K, love you. Bye. Bye. And now a word from our sponsors. When it comes to your home's garbage disposal, you want a name you can trust. That's why when it came time for me to choose a garbage disposal for my family, we went with a Duggan Disposal. Duggan Disposals are top of the line, ensuring that no matter what you throw down there, you can rest easy knowing that the Duggan Disposal will grind it up. Why risk using a disposal that might break or jam up? With a Duggan Disposal, you know that it's getting just wrecked, just unrecognizably destroyed. Duggan Disposals. Throw it in, they'll grind it up.